and I want to share with you the turbulent journey that Cindy and I embarked on. Our story began in a bustling bar where I held the position of a bartender. One evening, she walked in, and our lives took an unexpected turn. We started chatting, and it wasn't long before Cindy opened up to me about her ongoing divorce. Her marriage was disintegrating due to her husband's infidelity, and she sought solace in the comfort of our conversations. Gradually, our connection deepened, and we decided to take the plunge and move in together. We said goodbye to the bustling streets of New York and moved into my cozy little apartment in the suburbs. The first month, we lived in what felt like a fairy tale, not letting our eyes stray from each other. Cindy was fortunate to have a remote job at a major computer company, and she managed to keep it despite our change of location. Unfortunately, I wasn't as fortunate I lost my job but didn't rush to find a replacement. I rationalized this by explaining that I wanted to invest more time in our relationship and enjoy every moment, rather than squandering it on daily work. In the small town where my apartment was located, there were no bars. I didn't want to take on cleaning apartments or working on a construction site. My skills were better suited for less strenuous tasks. She scolded me for spending whole days playing computer games and not leaving the couch. It's true I did spend a whole week playing a newly released video game. But it's my way of unwinding, I needed some downtime. We lived in my apartment, and I felt that I was already contributing my fair share to our domestic life. After all, we didn't have to spend money on rent. I told her to consider it like this I pay for the apartment, and you handle groceries. But she then asked me to at least do some renovations. I replied that the apartment had been renovated just eight years ago, and it was practically new. I didn't have the extra money to throw around. I considered her requests as mere whims. Three months passed, and Cindy informed me that her job now required her to be in the office three days a week. This shift in her work schedule meant that I had to take on additional responsibilities, from cooking meals to even doing the laundry, tasks that were new and challenging for me. It was a significant adjustment. As time passed, Cindy started coming home later and later sometimes not at all. She cited exhaustion from work as the reason and claimed to have spent the night at her parents' house to get some rest. But one evening, I noticed her being dropped off at our doorstep in an expensive car. Suspicion nodded at me, and I couldn't help but ask who had driven her home. She casually replied that it was just a colleague who had given her a ride since her car had broken down. Shortly thereafter, Cindy stopped contributing her share to our expenses. I confronted her about this financial imbalance, arguing that she was essentially living off my earnings in my apartment without any contribution. Our once loving relationship started to deteriorate, and the intimacy we once shared became scarce. One fateful morning, I found a letter on the dining table. The note was direct and unforgiving. You have proven to be utterly useless and I'm returning to my husband, the one who truly cared for me. I've come to realize that his infidelity isn't as crucial as I once thought. Do not attempt to contact me or send any messages you are the most significant mistake in my life. In hindsight, I've come to the painful realization that Cindy was an ungrateful person who prioritized financial gain above all else. For her, love seemed to be just an empty word, and that was nothing more than a means to an end in her eyes. After the difficult breakup, I decided to take a couple of weeks to rest and regain my inner strength. 